So, let me just run something by you. The F12 has 740 horsepower. 740 horsepower. Now I know these days we get a bit blasé about power figures because someone's figured out some magic formula and we're able to extrapolate some crazy ponies from engines these days. But 740 horsepower, even still, is, is pretty top-end stuff and that power is delivered entirely through the rear wheels alone. If you have one of these things, you practically need a tyre sponsor. The power and torque from a standard F12 is ludicrous. Some might say unnecessary. I might say fantastic. And those of you who watched my previous videos will know that this particular F12 has been fitted with a titanium inner tech exhaust system. And the whole idea behind that in the first place was to unlock that glorious V12 sound that for whatever reason, Ferrari decided to hide away in the standard car. And to look at, the F12 is one of the most beautiful road cars you can lay your eyes on. It is elegant, it has some fantastic curves. Even when you're following this thing, it looks pretty chunky and squat, and it is a beautiful all-around car. So yes, needless to say, the F12, and particularly this F12, is an event each and every time you step into it. But can you imagine, can you wrap your head around an F12 with near 800 brake horsepower, an even louder straight through titanium exhaust system, and chunkier aggressive lugs to back it all up. Well, it would be a little something like this. and the smile factor when you're driving these cars. The exhaust tone on this thing, I've got to say it must be closer to being in the receiving end of a fighter jet engine to the face. Novitech or Enlargo kit. I've spent the last 10,000 miles or 12 months with an IP exhaust system. Now, admittedly, my system is only the half package. It's sort of halfway housed. It's not the full straight through thing. It's kind of cross pipes back. But this thing, let me just wind up th these windows. I've been having the windows down with me all day because, well, because of this. Listen to this. they've dialed this up. So, when I get in the F12 with the IP exhaust, the last thing I'm thinking is, this could do with being a bit louder. Oh my life! What is this? I've Once again, the vocabulary lacks the punch, guys. <laughs> what a fabulous instrument of wonder. Now I've read in my comments when I drive the F12, everyone's like, why are you always changing up and down so much? What's with what's all with these unnecessary gear shifts? Unnecessary, you say? Well, it's because I am playing the engine like a musical instrument. And what I find the Enlargo does is take me from a sort of amateur schoolboy on his flute to Johann Sebastian Bach on a ivory cello of ecstasy. So Anyway, it's not all about the noise. The Enlargo, I have found when I speak to people about it, it splits 
opinions, it can be a bit of a Marmite car. Some people absolutely love it, and it's normally those who have seen them in person because, like most supercars, when you see one in real life, the pictures don't do this thing justice. It has a squat like the sexiest bodybuilder you've ever seen. It's just absolutely pumped. And the way it rides the road, when you're sat with it level, the width is like a Le Mans car. It's got this fabulous carbon wing and it just rides like a full-blown race car. Visibility's okay too. Novitec as well, because their body kits are quite extreme, it is easy to dismiss these things as a bit of a flamboyant stick-on body kit. Let me assure you, Novitec is a German engineering company. These guys haven't just gone, that looks nice, stick it on and off we go. The body kit for these things are around £120,000. The reason for that is it is an engineered piece of kit. They have spent time in a wind tunnel Every panel is carbon fiber, okay? This isn't some fiberglass plastic stick on body kit. And needless to say, the exhaust system is a straight through titanium system. It weighs 13 kilograms less than the standard F12 exhaust system. And it resonates with glorious wonder with every single depression of the throttle, every single upshift, downshifts. I don't know how they've done this. I thought downshifts on the IPE system was good. Now, I'm not doing a disservice to IPE. I am in love with the system on my car. The sound quality of the IPE is phenomenal. The wonder of the Novitec system is that that sound quality is still there, but the volume level is of a different bracket. Okay, I mean, we are talking golden era of F1 here, genuine, and that isn't hyperbole, that is actual. We've been doing some tracking shots today and some drive-bys. When I listen to this thing coming, I expect it to be coming around corners before it's even there, because I hear it echoing through the woodland. substantial on something that by conventional road cars is already quite low um, and the wheels well let's just talk about the wheels now it complements that stance fantastically the body as well let's tie this all in together okay so to complement those wider wheels the front of the Enlargo is 60 millimeters wider than a standard F12 no small change the rear is 110 mil so we're talking big boy here. You know, this thing is like really puffing its chest out. And when you put the Enlargo and an F12 side by side, the F12 almost looks like a different model. It looks like it's elegant sister to its bodybuilding brother who might just sneak in the odd steroid here and there. It's really chunky. So yeah, 60 mil wider front, 110 mil wider rear. And to complement those massive arches, 21 inches at the front and 22 inches at the rear and as you can imagine they fill every last inch of that massive kit well now purists and you know i've been there they would argue or even roll their eyes that something as pure and fabulous as the f12 has basically been chopped into something completely different and that is in effect what's happened here but Let's just compare how these things drive before making any judgments. Because, you know, lots of people say, look, there's a reason Ferrari put hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of R&D into their cars. Well, let's just have a look. Let's compare these two and see how they feel. Immediately then, there are a couple of things that jump out at me. And let's start with the obvious thing, which is the sound. Now, don't get me wrong. The sound of the IP exhaust that I've installed on this car it's still a wonderful thing. In fact, I believe that it sort of 
maintains that perfect balance of sophistication and tyranny. <laughs> is that it maintains this beautiful tone, that V12 howl that you know people expect from a V12 engine. But the clever bit is that they've still managed to maintain that tone, but turn the volume way, way up. <laughs> trick is very hard to pull off. It's very hard to maintain a very classy sound but have the volume that the Enlargo manages to pull off. Normally at that sound level things break loose man, it gets all crackly and the sort of quality wears off. So yes, sound is definitely the first one and that's without a doubt jumping between these two cars is the overriding factor that you pick up immediately. Is It just blows your top madness. The other thing is the size and weight. Now when I say weight I don't mean the physical weight of the car. What I mean is the steering feel, that, that steering weight. The Enlargo immediately feels heavier. Now I'm not sure that's actually giving as much feedback as I first thought. It's actually that the wheels are so damn big it doesn't have that delicate balance the standard F12 has. It does feel a chunky piece of kit and on top of that you've got this incredibly wide body. Now the F12 by normal road standard is a fairly wide car. When I'm on tight British B roads I am aware that this is more of a GT car. It's definitely not a nimble supercar but the Enlargo takes that a step further. As I mentioned it's 60 mil wider at the front, 110 wider at the rear and you really notice that when you're on a British country lane. You can't thread it as well as the F12 and you certainly can't thread it as well as nimble supercar. Take something like a GT3 or, or a 458. Um, yeah, that thing is chunky and you really do know it. But I tell you something, at conventional road speeds and at the speed that you're going to drive this car most of the time, the number one factor here, the overriding dominant factor is this exhaust system. 100 cell boxes, just, just witness the sickness. It melts my face, you know what I mean? You know when some people listen to jazz, they get that jazz face. Mm. You know? This is my Lago face and it kind of like... Oh. It's like, look, and I'm playing it, and it's a, it's a sort of initial reaction. I'm not sort of consciously going, I need to change down now. My brain is interpreting such an orgasmic sound that it's telling my, my fingers to downshift, because it wants some more. It's like sort of ear ecstasy. I would like some more of that, please. Oh, Christ. Let's just crack the windows a notch. Just a little bit. The importance of sound and the correlation of emotion. Those two things together are, I mean, when I drive this, it gives me goosebumps. It actually gives me goosebumps. Because it, 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 it sort of pulls the heartstrings. And listen to that. Have a bit of this here.
This isn't engineer drama. This is performance drama, okay? So overrun on this is just like a short, sweet barbell. Huh? How cool is that? It says bang, 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 dumb, you know? Yeah? <laughs> This is more than just a body kit, more than just an exhaust. This is an engineering exercise by a fantastic German engineering company. And in order to get this extra power out of this car and also that extra sound, thanks to the ECU remap, what was an 8,500 RPM limit is now an 8,900 RPM rev limit. Doesn't sound much, but you know, our brains operate in such finite degrees that those next 300, 400 RPM, that's the essential bits that makes the difference between wow and holy shit. You know, the extra torque, it's noticeable. I think it's around 716 Newton meters of torque. They just tweaked this a bit more, but the way that it has been remapped, the power delivery isn't savage. It's very smooth and very progressive and as a result it hasn't made this thing sort of larry and skittish you can floor it and still control it yes it still has the tendency like the f12 to sort of skip and step out of it but for the road again a lot of this stuff is all about drama it's all about how it makes you feel and once again we found ourselves a car that makes you feel a million dollars as soon as you put this thing on we cold started this thing earlier and a cold start, the chokes are open for a while. You don't want neighbors. If you, you know, if you like your neighbors, don't buy one of these. Uh, it's, it, it, it's horrific. All the wildlife disperses from the area permanently. <laughs> speed and performance it doesn't feel that much faster than a standard f12 i think you get this heightened sense of speed because it sounds so absolutely insane but it, I, i'm pretty sure it's not going any faster now okay purists will say no tuners will say yes but look we're in we are in a world now where engines like this are a dying breed like it or not these are on their way out. I wouldn't be surprised if the replacement F12 is going to be a, a hybrid. I would be surprised if it was completely naturally aspirated. You know, we've got the drivetrain. It is there, it exists. If you remember maybe five, six years ago, do you remember that green 599, like Hikers edition they did? And then the LaFerrari comes along and it has a hybrid drivetrain, which means these engines they are the last of their kind. We've discussed that a standard F12 just doesn't sound that great. And like it or not, the fact that there are companies out there making the most of exhaust sounds and engine notes like this, it's something to praise, behold, and savor. Because one day, and I've said this before, when our kids grow up, we're gonna be saying, you know, when I was your age, we had these things called V12s, and they were absolutely fabulous. And people like Nobitech were taking these fabulous engines and exploiting them for all of their fantastic potential. And here it is, and this is gonna be one of the last of those things. just as I'm signing off. Not complaining, I'm gonna go and drive this thing to its nth degree now, it's all sunny and dry. But as always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.